people don't go into not quitting. They go, it's like Shrek. Shrek had to quit wanting his swamp back, but he couldn't quit on Fiona. Mm -hmm. So it's also choosing. Just choosing. All right. So we're going to be taking your calls a little later on, on 83 uh, You can ask those questions to our Motivational uh, Monday guest, asking anything you'd like, you know, basing it on what we've been talking about today, the seven steps to helping you live a success story uh, and story strategy as such, as we've just discussed today. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. Right now, though, time for us to cross over to Leanne and Liesl, talking about that one thing that you cannot travel without. Now, there's something that um, it's terrible is if you are traveling and you find that you get to your destination and you've forgotten something that you should have had with you, there's nothing worse than feeling like that. Like, for instance, getting somewhere and you realize you've forgotten your underwear what? or your toothbrush. <laughs> That's what happened to me this weekend. I got to the West Coast National Park mm -hmm. and packed thing and I didn't have my toothbrush. Wow. Do you had the toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happens if you forget your underarm, though? Very, very good trick. Your underarm. Use soap. Oh. Put some soap there, it'll keep you dry and somewhat less smelly mm. than um, if you had had your underarm <laughs> with you. <laughs> well, let us know on our Facebook page, Express Her Morning Show, SABC3. I know Kia said a bit earlier she can't live without her lipstick. Mm -hmm. And a little later on, you, uh, Katlejo is going to find out why women place so much importance yes. on lipstick. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, I'm heading over to uh, commentate at the Ironman, which is the world's toughest endurance race. Mm -hmm. It's a swim followed yeah. by a 180 kilometer cycle. Right. and a run and the cycle part got me thinking because mm -hmm. the University of uh, Nelson Mandela Bay mm -hmm. started building an electronic bicycle wow. and of course Express's team was there to find out more. Let's check it out. Campuses are crowded. Ask anybody trying to find parking there. That's why the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University launched an exciting electric bicycle program. In line with NMMU's Vision 2020, which is how we see ourselves by the year 2020, the university that we want to be, green issues are very much part of that vision. And we'd like to obviously reduce our carbon footprint. And this is a project to help see that to fruition. So we're starting it off on a pilot and reducing the number of cars that are going around campus and from campus to campus. The idea started to form when 10 years ago, Dr. Freddy Foster looked at his mountain bike, bought a kit and transformed it into an electric bike or e-bike. These electric bikes work with a battery that is being charged and that powers a, a hub motor and it's got a throttle. It a cycles just like a normal bicycle, so if you want to pedal, you're welcome to pedal. If you need a bit of exercise, you can use any kind of battery. You can go from 36 volts all the way up to 90 volts, depending on how fast you want to travel. Unassisted, you can go 5 kilometers. Assisted, you can go about 45 kilometers, depending on the, on the terrain. Slow down, Dog Freddy. SA legislation conforming to the European Union rules allows e-bikes a speed limit of 25 kilometers per hour. E-bikes may be driven without a driver's license and registration. The Center for Energy Research focuses on renewable energy technologies, including solar power and wind turbines that help power activities on campus. During the day, we produce uh, energy directly onto the grid, and at night, when the sun doesn't shine, we actually consume a little bit of energy. In total, we're energy negative. That means we produce more energy that we, that we can consume at this facility. We will uh, put up another 3 kilowatt array on the north campus uh, on top of a car park, which will offset the electricity used by charging these 10 bicycles. Because the campus has photovoltaic panels supplying electricity into the grid, the bikes can be charged anywhere on campus using green energy. The specially designed car parks have solar panels on the roof and e-cyclists can ride up to 40 kilometers before recharging. The staff and up onto this program will come in as per normal with their cars. They will park under the car park. This is a solar car park. The, the solar panels are mounted on top of the roof. From there, these staff members will then uh, proceed to the points where the scooters are being charged. They will then unplug the scooters and then they will use the scooters for their daily operations to run between campuses and between buildings. Riding the scooters is quite a uh, different experience from actually using a car. Our university is in a nature reserve here and to use a scooter means you are outside in the fresh air, being part of the nature. So it's a rather exciting initiative. It's a lot of fun riding these bikes. It takes a little bit of getting used to because there's a a throttle and there's a bit of power on the bike that as a normal bike rider I'm certainly not used to. I really can see the benefits of it and the speed at which they travel without you having to put any effort in is going to be amazing in getting from 
meetings to meetings. So I'm really excited and um, I'm looking forward to, to riding these bikes. What's more, these bikes may also reduce noise pollution on campus because they're so quiet, making it very popular with the professors, but maybe less so with the rowdier students. That's a very clever idea. Absolutely. Electric bicycle, okay. hey? Sheesh. I want one. Well, if you've just joined <laughs> us, we've been talking throughout the show about what things can you not travel without. That's it. And we have some Facebook comments that are quite interesting. A couple of trends coming out there. It's quite um, a, hey? Yeah, quite a lot of comments came through as well. But we have our first comment. Likle Magubane, she says, my cell phone. Nseba, Jola, Umtle, Gunchu says my phone as well. Everyone has cell phone. Chef yeah. Andre Hoffman says uh, a cell phone as well. And then Derek McClarty says toothbrush. Toothbrush. Toothbrush is a very good one, yeah. How important has our cell phones become to us? Hey? Seriously. Our cell phones are super important to us. And